Hello and welcome to lesson 34 of the Learning Guitar series. Uh, this particular lesson is uh, actually very important because we're going to recap uh, using a bunch of exercises everything that we've done in lesson from 1 to 33. And uh, in this lesson, so from lesson 1 to 15, we dealt with Dorian and the five shapes or three notes per string, seven shapes. Um, and as we know, when it comes to the cage system, so the five shapes, or so three notes per string, seven shapes, the moment we move from Dorian to Ionian to Mixolydian, the actual finger patterns don't change. So the first 15 lessons are also very important because in it you will find um, all exercises that you can do, at least some of them, that you can do when it comes to scales, so intervals, uh, triads, uh, Group of three, group of four. Those PDFs are free to download uh, via my Patreon page. So if you haven't done so, you know, download them if you haven't started yet. If you followed these lessons that I'm doing uh, until now, um, as I said, like we've done 115 was uh, Ionian, uh, 19 to 28, I believe, uh, we studied Dorian, so minor, and all the arpeggios for Dorian and the scales and the chords. And then lesson 30 or 29 to 33, we dealt with mixolydian. In other words, so far we dealt with major chords, at least one type of major chords, the one related to Ionian, chord number one. We've done uh, Dorian, so chord number two. And we've done mixolydian, chord number five. Of course, these are also like, you know, so-called modes, right? And, you know, by you being able to play already just major and minor, across all the neck and scales and arpeggios, you can tackle a lot of music just by, you know, being able to say, okay, I want a, a B chord, and you know that you can do it here, 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 and that's five shapes, and now you're back. So the guitar is gonna be seven shapes, right? Seven cages. Uh, and so same B chord, and you know, okay, that's my... Uh, Ionian, in case you're playing a major kind of stuff, that's my Ionian, 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 and you're back. It, you know, that's, that's, you know, one massive leap in your ability to play guitar, uh, no matter what the kind of music. So, you know, as I said, you have a B chord and, you know, And as we looked in lesson 16, I believe, songs, especially when it comes to say pop, R&B, et cetera, they come in, they have a key, they have a key center. And most of the time, that key center is the chord number one. Sometimes chord number six, we'll see that in the future. But So already knowing this stuff will allow you to comp, find chords, major and minor should be enough for pop music, sometimes dominant seven, digitally with a seven in the chord. And same thing, scales and arpeggio will give you a guideline for how to solo on them, okay? And I did a lesson on phrasing, and again, today we are recapping things, so I'm gonna also look into what we discussed in terms of harmony and theory, lesson 16, and phrasing, I don't remember if it was lesson 17 or 18. Uh, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna use uh, a particular chord progression, which is like a cycle of fourths, so-called cycle of fourths. Uh, before we do that, let me show you the PDFs that I created for this particular lesson. Uh, of course, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can, you know, freely download, you freely, you know, supporter. So, you know, it's $3 a month, uh, which I think is worth it in terms of supporting this project. And of course, you can download it from there. Uh, if you're not a Patreon supporter, uh, but one thing about being one <laughs> would be very much appreciated, especially in these difficult times. Uh, or, you know, when, once I put them, uh, you know, on the screen, just, you know, take a screenshot, you know, that, that would help. But as I said, consider being a Patreon supporter is not expensive at all and is really helps to bring this project, you know, uh, forward. It's becoming some sort of little, little encyclopedia. Okay. So let's look at the, the first PDF. So this is, you know, it's just a recap page. As you know, we've done way more than this when it came to chord arpeggios and scale for, say, the Ionian. There's like 15 lessons on it. This is just a basic roadmap in case, say, this is the first time 
you see any of these lessons and that's where you're starting from. Okay, you can even start from this if you want to, but then if you want to move forward, there is way more articulation and way more content related to each of these shapes in terms of studying uh, uh, intervals and triads and groupings and uh, major sevens, major nine, uh, major thirteens. You know, there's so much more than just this. But if this is just a recap, okay? But you can be comfortable to have it in front of you, you know, like even if you've done the lesson, just as a reminder. So you have here iron shapes, five shapes, chords. I put the major seven once so that, you know, you kind of visualize the difference in between major seven and dominant seven and minor seven. Same thing for the pages. The pages are major seven pages. Then you have the mixeridian shapes. So dominant seven, basically chord. Uh, these are the shapes, shape of A, shape of D, shape of G7, C7. Again, here are the chords, basic chords. I mean, you can articulate them even more. Obviously, like, you know, there's a flat seven here, you could add it here, you know, be smart about it. And here is the arpeggio. And last but not least, Dorian, so minor, E minor, A minor, D minor. Here is the shapes, here is the chords, and here is the arpeggios. So this, you know, I'll give you time if you have to take a screenshot. One, two, and three. The other PDF you'll find is the exercises. So practicing in fourths for major use Ionian chords, scales, and arpeggios, lessons 115. For minor seven, use Dorian chord scales and arpeggios is lesson 19 to 28. For dominant seven chords, use Mixolydian chords, scales and arpeggio lesson 29 to 33. Uh, as a progression, as you can see, this is G major, then you know, then minor and dominant seven. The fourth of G, literally, the fourth of G is C, the fourth of C is F, the fourth of F is B flat, the fourth of B flat is E flat, the fourth of E flat is A flat, fourth is D flat, the fourth is F sharp. The fourth of F sharp is B, the fourth of B is E, the fourth of E is A, the fourth of A is D, and the fourth of D is G. So you're back and you keep cycling this progression, okay? And so why is, you know, we're starting from a cycle of fourths because, as you noticed, that kind of core progression allows us to practice all 12 keys. Also, it has got another advantage in terms of us developing both uh, photographic memory and muscle memory. Uh, let me show you on the guitar how this works. So if I start from G and I have my shape of E, okay? Let's not, com let's not confuse a shape. A shape is just something that I can move around. So this is a shape of E. I'm not playing E major. I'm playing G major in this case. But the shape, say in this case, is the C major in the shape of E, A major in the shape of E. So let's not confuse shapes and chords. A shape is just a shape, okay? So, but if I'm starting from G, I have G in the shape of E. The fourth of G, so this is G, this is its fourths, and this is C. So C, shape of A, then I have F in the shape of D. So now I'm doing one, two, three, okay? After F, I have B flat, and B flat, I'm going to use the bass, which is up here. And so I have a shape of G. And the fourth of B flat is E flat. So I'm going to use E flat, shape of C. So I can, as you can see in the first five chords, so this one, two, three, four, five, I already used all five shapes that I learned. Shape of E, shape of A, shape of D, shape of G, shape of C. Now, the comfortable thing is that, say, we've done one, two, three, four, five. Now, the fourth of, a, of E flat is A flat. So I'm actually back to shape of E. And not only I'm back to shape of E, I'm a semitone up compared to before. I started in G, now I'm in A flat. A flat, C sharp, F, B. E. As you can see, it's still the same pattern. The fourth of E is A, so now I'm up here. And again, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This makes the exercise kind of mechanical in a way and predictable. So uh, try not to fall into the trap that you just uh, practice this mechanically without telling yourself what chord you're playing because otherwise you'll be able to do the exercise but 
you will not remember, okay, that's a C sharp, okay, or that's an E, or that's an F sharp. You'll be able to play the exercise still because the sequence stays the same. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. At the same time, the fact that it's kind of mechanical, as you will see, I'll demonstrate it to you, by the way, in a second. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, as usual. Uh, allows you sometimes to literally, because you're playing it mechanically, it does help your muscle memory in a way, right? So by playing mechanically, you're practicing muscle memory. By telling yourself what chord you're actually playing, you are practicing your photographic memory. So that, you know, in the future, if you think of a chord, you know where they are based on that photographic memory. So when you're practicing this, tell yourself what chord you're playing and look at the guitar. Uh, you don't have a photographic memory unless you look at the guitar first. Then when you're playing, you'll be able to see it in your head. And that's what photographic memory is about. So, you know, G7, I know this is G7. I don't have to look at the guitar, right? And that's the scale in that particular shape. I know that this is another one. That's still G7. Uh, that's G7. That's G7. That's one way of playing it. That's another way of playing it. I said, you cannot develop photographic memory without, you know, first looking at the guitar and blah, blah, blah. Let's look at how we want to do this as an exercise. You, two ways. First, if you're not yet familiar with all the chord shapes or all the scales or all the arpeggios, do it without a metronome. So start from G and tell yourself, okay, that's G major. This is the scale that goes with it. And this is the arpeggio that goes with it. Okay? Without a metronome, there is no rush. You can do it at any speed. You just want to associate a chord, an arpeggio, and a scale. And this is Ionian, obviously, I'm doing now. From G, we go to C. So C major. That's my scale. That's my arpeggio. F. That's my arpeggio. That's my scale. B flat. Scale. Arpeggio. E flat. Arpeggio. Scale. And now I'm back in shape of E. So I'm back to. Okay. And so A flat, you do this with old, you know, you keep cycling forms, so it's going up the neck. So you're practicing the entire neck of the guitar. That's that's the other comfortable thing about this particular progression. Not only you're practicing all the shapes, all the chords, 12 keys, but it's also moving up the neck comfortably, so you're not just in one area. Um, if you start practicing with a metronome, once you're familiar with it, with chords, we know, as I said, like if you're seeing this for the first time, you might use the chords which are on the PDFs. But if you've done the lessons before, we know that, you know, for major, I don't have to necessarily play just major seven. There is major nine. There is major six. There's many different ways I can play, I can play a major chord. The same thing is going to be for minor chords in dominant seven. But I can go, like, say, you know, G major seven, C major nine, F major seven with the third in the bass, uh, B flat with the fifth in the bass. E flat major seven or E flat major six, like seven with a six or with a thirteen. A major thirteen. Uh, sorry, no A major. A flat major thirteen. C sharp with a thirteen. Uh, F sharp with a nine. B flat with a nine. Sorry, B. B with a nine. It's got that kind of sound. E major six, A major six nine. I mean B, E, E, A, D, G. And we're 
back to G, by the way. So that's one way you can play chords. You can arpeggiate them. You can, you can do it to a metronome. So it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Tell yourself what chord you're playing, that's the important part. Especially the more you go up the neck. So let's say your ear C. Two, three, four, one, F, three, four, uh, B flat, E flat, three, four, A flat, two, three, four, C sharp, two, three, four, F sharp, three, four, B, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, D. Uh, and so forth and so on. Arpeggios, same thing. So you might want to practice just the arpeggios. G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp. F sharp, B, E, and so forth and so on. Okay, and you keep going, you just keep going until you're up here. Um, now I started all your pages, I'm, going, I'm ascending, descending. Okay, so every page is starting basically on the top and up to here. You might want to do the opposite because you know you don't want to create a photographic memory that sees a chord just from the top or sees an arpeggio from the top. So I like, say you're going to start backwards, basically G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, and we're back to. Or you want to mix and match. So say you go down in a way, up in the next chord. So say in this, in this sequence, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, etc. Maybe ascending in G, descending in C, ascending in F, descending in B flat, ascending in E flat, descending in A flat. And because of this process, the shape will just go around in a cycle manner, even in terms of going up and down. I'll show you what I mean. Remember the E shape, I'm going down first, okay? C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Now you see A flat, which is again shape of E, but I'm starting from the top, which means that the, also like the shape are cycling, so you're practicing automatically up and down each shape as you move along, which is a good thing to do, <laughs> okay? Same thing with the scales. So say Ionian, that's G, C, F, B flat, A flat, E flat, a flat, then A flat, and then of course C sharp, F sharp, B, etc. So in this case, I was uh, ascending in the key, so G, I was descending in the following key, C. You can, if you're not familiar yet, just. That's just G, C, F. flat E flat okay if you do it to a metronome again like you might want to start say uh, 90 ppm and play eight notes uh, triplets 60 notes I, I explained one on previous lesson how to do that but you know uh, if you have a metronome that goes one two three four so basically you have like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, E and one, e, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. But 
maybe you want to do one EA, two EA, and three EA, four EA. So you want to play in triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's the same speed, right? Let's see. F. B flat. E flat. A flat. Same thing if you were doing 16s or, you know, the, the fact of using the same, I suggest you, you know, you, you don't start at 80 and then you kind of speed it up. I mean, that's one way of doing it. You can say speed up, play eight notes and speed up five BPM at a time. So today you do 80, tomorrow 85, after tomorrow 90, 95. Another way of doing it instead is to keep the metronome at the same speed and just, you know, change the subdivision. So you're playing eight notes. At 80 BBM, then you're trying to play triplets at 80 BBM, which of course is going to be much faster. Uh, and then you, which I think is the equivalent to playing 120. I think, I'm not sure. You know, I can be wrong, put it in the comments. Uh, and then you can play 16 notes at 80 BBM. Okay. And that's obviously much faster. Okay. Um, once you're done with the major, of course, there is minor. The sequence is the same, it's just you're using minor chords this time, or dominant seven chords, and minor arpeggios, Dorian scales, Mixolydian scales. So, say minor, G minor, C minor, F minor, B flat minor, E flat minor, A flat minor, C sharp minor, F, F sharp minor, B minor, E minor, A minor, chord wise, arpeggio wise, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, F sharp. B, E, A, D, and so forth and so on. Same thing with the scales. Dorian, G Dorian, C, C Dorian, F Dorian, B flat Dorian. E flat Dorian, A flat Dorian, and so forth and so on. Again, even with the scales, now we're playing it, you know, once you're familiar with it, obviously, but now we're playing it in a very linear fashion. We're just going, you know, up in a sequence, you know, like, you're literally playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in the case of Dorian, one, two, flat, three, four, five, so. 6 flat 7. But there is a bunch of other ways you can do the same thing. So say, for example, I could practice the same thing using interval of seconds. So this. So let's do it Dorian. So this is G Dorian. Right? Then C Dorian. F Dorian. Uh, B flat Dorian. Uh, e flat Dorian. Uh, sorry, I have to think about it because I'm talking to you. Intervals of seconds, thirds, fifths, you know, group of three, so you could play the same. So this is a G, Dorian, group of three. And then you move to next C. F. 
have. Next, B flat. So let's do let's go back to Ionian for example like so. That's G, that one let us move to C. And so forth and so on. So start with a basic kind of scale up and down, but then you know in time change it. Or you can also do it in a way that you don't necessarily start from either the top or the bottom, you start from the middle. So G, C, F, B flat, E flat. A flat. At the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you a backing track that I prepared for you, which I'm going to make public. So it's going to be a separate video, but you can just use to practice this stuff. And there's a few tricks associated with that. And this kind of playing in the middle, starting from the middle, will become even more obvious if you do it to a backing track, so you can actually follow the progression. As we said, so major uh, Dorian and uh, Mixolydian, same affair. So G7. C7, F7, B flat 7, E flat 7, A flat 7, C sharp 7, B7, E7, A7. And so forth and so on. Same thing with the chords. G7. C7. B flat 7. E flat 7. A flat 7. Or this. C sharp 7. F sharp 7. B7. E7. A7. D7. G7, C7, F7. Again, you might want to, at some point, just to verify that you know what you're doing, say like, okay, I have uh, F7, that's the chord, right? What's the arpeggio? Okay. That's my arpeggio. What's my scale? As I say, the fact that you're playing major, minor, and dominant seven makes you cover so much ground. So it, it's just a matter of verifying that this what these exercises are for, that you know what we've done in between lesson one and 1033, basically. And to continue on this exercise, there is a couple of more. One is five to one. And this comes basically from you know chord number five going to chord number one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this would be uh, lesson 16, that's where you find this chart. And say, if you are in the key of C, chord number 5 is G7, chord number 1 is C. If you are in the key of, say, G, chord number 5 it is D7, chord number, five, chord number 1 is G. So this exercise, basically what it does, on the 
what it does, it allows you to move, say, from G7 to C major, so chord number five into chord number one in the key of C. Then C major becomes C7, so now we have a, becomes a chord number five, and the chord number one is F major. F major becomes F7, so from chord number one, it becomes chord number five for B flat. And it keeps going this way so that you go through all 12 keys and it cycles through. I say that the comfortable thing about these particular progressions is that it allows you to play all chords in all keys. And that's the entire point. So in this case, you simply have G7 into C major, C7 into F major, F7, B flat major. B flat seven, E flat major, E flat seven, A flat major, and you see we're back to this shape. As I told you, this this really works in that sense. It's very comfortable. Um, one thing you might have spotted, and if you haven't, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you do this exercise. You might find in a position where you might not be too comfortable with the classic, uh, let's call it this way, arpeggio shapes or even scale shapes. Three notes per string is, an, you know, you can see that as a more comfortable way to play certain things compared to the cage system way of playing certain things. In my case, for example, like say, this particular arpeggio, this is F major, shape of D in particular. <laughs> This would be the cage version of it. You might have spotted that actually sometimes I prefer to play it this way. So this note here actually becomes this. So I'm actually stretching. And the reason I like to do that is because I prefer that to having to slide or having to do this. I find it uncomfortable, okay? Uh, same thing for C major seven. So, C major 7, so shape of A, if anything. Sometimes I prefer to do this. So, these two notes here. I prefer to play this note here, and I end up with this. Same thing for dominant 7. So, what I, in other words, what I'm trying to say, you don't have to be uber strict to the arpeggio shapes or to the... Um, to the scale shapes, you know, you find a way that is comfortable for you to find to do things. The important thing is to do things. So, say shape of G in this case B flat. The cage arpeggio would be this. Personally, I tend to play it like this to avoid this kind of thing, which I, you know, you know, I can do it both way. Don't get me wrong. When I'm playing, I don't really want to think about it, but. I find this more comfortable than that's pretty much it. Sorry for the detour, but I think it's important. The guitar, unlike a piano, you can play the same note in several places. So you know you might find certain things more comfortable. Say C again, shape of A7, you can do it this way. You can do it this way. You can do it this way, and I think also this way. So you have now stretch here. So whatever works for you, that's that's one you know. But the important thing: follow the sequence. Play practice in forms. Uh, we have looked at the five to one. Last but not least, we have a two five one. Now this is an even more important progression because it contains a minor, a dominant seven. And a major. So it literally recaps everything we've done so far. And so basically it's 251 in the key of F, then it's 251 in the key of B flat, 251 in the key of E flat. And as you can see again, we're playing in fourth F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp. These are all fourths for each other. So we're going through all 12 keys. Um, once more, if you don't understand where the two, why I'm picking up those chords and say it's two, five, one, say in the key of C, chord number two is D minor, chord number five is G7, chord number one is C. And in fact, if we look here, where is it? Uh, in the key of C, 
which is down here. Chord number two is D minor. Chord number five is G7. Chord number one is C major. Okay. Now, when it comes to this progression, of course, you don't have to memorize all this stuff. I mean, like take a screenshot and everything in front of you and follow it. You know, like, as I said, at first, maybe do it without a metronome so you have time to think before you try and approach it with a metronome. Do it with a metronome at some point. Or do it with a backing track that I'm uploading. I'll show you at the end of this video how I would do it. Um, so, first G minor, C7, C major, F major, so G minor, C7, F major, two bars. C minor, uh, F7, B flat, B major. The third one is F minor, B flat 7, E flat 7. B flat minor, E flat 7, A flat 7, A flat major and so forth and so on. Same thing, you know, like with the chords. So you will end up with, say, G minor. F. C minor. B flat. B flat minor. E flat, A flat. And again, you will find variations on these chords, plenty of variations on these chords in the first lessons. This is a recap because it allows you to use pretty much everything we studied. Okay? And if you think if you think about it, say if I practice just the page of Ionian in fourth, all that kind of stuff we did in the beginning. And it moves up in semitone because of the exercise is kind of designed that way. That takes kind of five minutes, probably five, ten minutes to go through all of it. And then minor is another five, ten minutes. Uh, dominant seven is another five, ten minutes. So that's like, you know, maybe half an hour, 25 minutes, half an hour. Then you have the five to one, and two, five, one. That's basically an hour of practice once you're familiar with it. So maybe at first it's going to take you like a day to figure it out, right? But in time, it's going to take you probably half an hour, one hour to go through all of that. And you practice pretty much, you know, what you know, everything you know, the moment you start adding variations, group of three, group of four, the stuff I talked about before, you're basically recapping one year and a half worth of lessons. And I think that's the point, that's why I'm saying this lesson is particularly important for that. And it's important to do it before we move forward with the rest of the modes, because as I said, this is major, minor, and dominant seven. And these are chords which you find everywhere. Okay, so the moment you can do this stuff and you can identify, you know, chords all over the neck and the scale that goes with it and the scale that, you know, then it's just about playing. And I'll show it to you with a backing track. What I'll do with the backing track, basically, is that progression. By the way, if you want to do your own backing track, the backing track I devised, you can use it to practice major, but you can also use it to practice minor and to practice dominant seven, and it's the same backing track. The trick I used to do that, instead of having to do three back and different backing tracks, it's actually very simple, it's an harmonic trick, but it's you know nothing particular. I just want to show to you what, what's happening. If you remember, and you should know, a major chord. Let me make this bigger. Uh, oops. Um, let's do this. A major chord is. So, a major chord is one, three, and five, okay? But by one, I mean your root note, okay? And that's what a major chord looks like. This is basically what we did in lesson one. A minor chord is... So, a minor chord is one, flat three, and five. And a dominant seven chord is one, three, five, flat seven. Now, in pop music, most of the time, like even the dominant seven chords or the five chord is actually played as a triad, okay? So let me remove this for a second. And as you can see, what these chords, family of chords, have in common is the one and the five. And what changes is the three. 
If I remove from my backing track the tree, now whatever is happening, you know, and the chords I'm playing, and I'm using a keyboard to do that. The chord I'm playing is only one and five, which is, you know, guitar players should know that one and five because it's actually a power chord. This, that's a one and five. But with a keyboard, you can use wider intervals, and it sounds like a chord even if it's only two notes. And the bass is only playing the root note, so like in the sequence, which is um, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, C sharp, F sharp, B, uh, B, E, A, D, G, C, F, so forth and so on. Because the keyboard is only playing one and five, and the bass is only playing one, then you can practice major on that, and then, you know, once you're done, you can restart the backing track and suddenly you can play minor arpeggios and it still works. And then you can stop it, start it again and practice dominant seven arpeggios and you can even mix and match. You could even, you know, say like play G major, but then C minor, then I don't know, F major, B flat seven, E flat major, a flat seven. You can literally mix and match the backing track. It's gonna work no matter what. One other thing that you want to do at some point, because of course these are all exercises, great, do them for a while, and at some point use the backing track to actually play, play some music. In this case, maybe go back. I don't remember if it's lesson seventeen or eighteen, when uh, I discussed uh, at least at the basic level of the idea of phrasing. So this idea of taking one little musical idea and then multiply it and find some degree of a continu continuity. I think that's the word. As opposed to just, you know, random, I'm going to play, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know if I can, but you know, like this is G, then for C, um, I don't know, F. As a solo, this makes no sense to me. But if you take, you know, I don't know, pa 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 pa. I'm going to take just a rhythmic idea as a starting point that goes ta 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 ta. Okay, so I don't know, in G. Ba, 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 ba. C. That's a new idea. B flat. A flat. A little, little bit of a bluesy line there. So but you know, try and phrase it. So like use the backing track, and again, you're playing cyclone force, mixing arpeggios, chords, you can practice anything on that. The, the keyboards are played like a pad, which allows you to play rhythm guitar if you want. So you can play chords and play any form of rhythm. Um, and then you can play solo on that. And as I say, this is a great exercise. At the end of the day, if you can say, you know, at some point ask yourself, okay, A minor, there is one here, there is one here, there is one here, there is one here. There is one here. If you, this is all A minor. These are all A minor. Idea. Now, like you know, it's uh, it's late in the evening, and I'm a bit <laughs> I'm a bit tired at this point. But so there is many mistakes in my playing right now. But uh, I'm gonna finish this lesson by thanking the handful of patrons which are supporting this project. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that more of you will join them. It's, as I said, it's three dollars a month. Uh, I'm going to upload for the advanced Patreon supporters uh, more exercises that is like uh, practicing this thing, not just in fourths, in intervals of fourths, but also in thirds and sixths. You know, uh, it's really something that uh, if you can do it, you know, 
as I said, like he's really going to reinforce your knowledge of the fret board where the chords are, no matter where and scales, at least when it comes to Ionian, Dorian and Mixolydian, before we move on to the rest of the modes. But these are very important ones, and especially the 2-5-1 progression, if you want to play any form of jazz or not only, I mean, that's, that's a progression which is all everywhere, you know, especially in, in, you know, in, in jazz. So it's a starting point to know it well in all keys. Um, so, as I was saying, Patreon, if you can support it, is fantastic. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving a link into the description. Same thing, if you want to buy me a coffee, I'm leaving a PayPal donate. Every help for this project is, uh, is very much appreciated. Uh, after I finish, I will upload the, the, the backing track and show you how I would do it. And as I said, I'm going to leave a link for you to find it as a separate video and just use it as a backing track. And uh, you can use the YouTube function also to slow it down and speed it up. You know, so, so some sort of uh, metronome. Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope it, these lessons are helping you. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to ask. I'm always happy to answer. And uh, until next time, it's been, uh, it's been a real pleasure.